Iron Man is a superhero appearing in American comic books published by Marvel Comics. The character was co-created by writer and editor Stan Lee, developed by scripter Larry Lieber, and designed by artists Don Hack and Jack Kirby. The character made his first appearance in Tales of Suspense No. 39, cover dated March 1963, and received his title in Iron Man No. 1, May 1968. In 1963, the character founded the Avengers superhero team with Thor, Ant-Man, Wasp, and the Hulk, a wealthy American business magnate, playboy, philanthropist, inventor, and ingenious scientist, Anthony Edward Tony Stark suffers a severe chest injury during a kidnapping. When his captors attempt to force him to build a weapon of mass destruction, he instead creates a mechanized suit of armor to save his life and escape captivity. Later, Stark develops his suit adding weapons and other technological devices he designed through his company, Stark Industries. He uses the suit and successive versions to protect the world as Iron Man. Although at first concealing his true identity, Stark eventually publicly reveals himself to be Iron Man. Initially, Stan Lee used Iron Man to explore Cold War themes, particularly the role of American technology and industry in the fight against communism. Subsequent reimaginings of Iron Man have shifted to contemporary matters. Iron Man has headlined various comic book series. Throughout most of the character's publication history, he has been a founding member of the Avengers. Iron Man has been adapted for several animated television shows and films. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Tony Stark was portrayed by Robert Downey Jr. in the films Iron Man, 2008, The Incredible Hulk, 2008, Iron Man 2, 2010, The Avengers, 2012, Iron Man 3, 2013, Avengers, Age of Ultron, 2015, Captain America, Civil War, 2016, Spider-Man, Homecoming, 2017, Avengers, Infinity War, 2018, and Avengers, Endgame, 2019, while Mick Wingert voiced the character in the animated series What If, 2021, Iron Man's Marvel Comics premiere in Tales of Suspense No. 39, cover dated March 1963, was a collaboration among editor and story plotter Stan Lee, scripter Larry Lieber, story artist Don Heck and cover artist and character designer Jack Kirby. In 1963, Lee had been toying with the idea of a businessman superhero. He wanted to create the quintessential capitalist, a character that would go against the spirit of the times and Marvel's readership. Lee said, I think I gave myself a dare. It was the height of the Cold War. The readers, the young readers, if there was one thing they hated, it was war. It was the military. So I got a hero who represented that to the hundredth degree. He was a weapons manufacturer. He was providing weapons for the army. He was rich, and he was an industrialist. I thought it would be fun to take the kind of character that nobody would like, none of our readers would like, and shove him down their throats and make them like him. And he became very popular. He set out to make the new character a wealthy, glamorous ladies man but one with the secret that would plague and torment him as well. Writer Jerry Conway said, Here you have this character, who on the outside is invulnerable, I mean, just can't be touched, but inside is a wounded figure. Stan made it very much an interface wound, you know. His heart was broken, you know, literally broken. But there's a metaphor going on there, and that's, I think. What made that character interesting? Lee based this playboy's looks and personality on Howard Hughes, explaining, Howard Hughes was one of the most colorful men of our time. He was an inventor, an adventurer, a multi-billionaire, a ladies' man, and finally a nutcase. Without being crazy, he was Howard Hughes, Lee said. While Lee intended to write the story himself, a minor deadline emergency eventually forced him to hand over the premiere issue to Lieber who fleshed out the story. The art was split between Kirby and Hack. He designed the costume, Hack said of Kirby, because he was doing the cover. The covers were always done first, but I created the look of the characters, like Tony Stark and his secretary Pepper Potts. In a 1990 interview, when asked if he had a specific model for Tony Stark and the other characters, Hack replied, No, I would be thinking more along the lines of some characters I like. 
which would be the same kind of characters that Alex Toth liked, which was an Errol Flynn type. Iron Man first appeared in 13 to 18 page stories in Tales of Suspense which featured anthology science fiction and supernatural stories. The character's original costume was a bulky grey armored suit, replaced by a golden version in the second story, issue number 40th of April 1963. It was redesigned as sleeker, red and golden armor in issue number 48, December 1963, by that issue's interior artist, Steve Ditko, although Kirby drew it on the cover. As Hack recalled in 1985, the second costume, the red and yellow one, was designed by Steve Ditko. I found it easier than drawing that bulky old thing. The earlier design, the robot-looking one, was more Kirby-ish. In his premiere, Iron Man was an anti-communist hero who defeated various Vietnamese agents. Lee later regretted this early focus. Throughout the character's comic book series, technological advancement and national defense were constant themes for Iron Man. But later issues developed Stark into a more complex and vulnerable character as they depicted his battle with alcoholism, as in the Demon in a Bottle storyline, and other personal difficulties. From issue number 59, November 1964, to its final issue number 99, March 1968, the anthological science fiction backup stories in Tales of Suspense were replaced by a feature starring the superhero Captain America. Lee and Heck introduced several adversaries for the character including the Mandarin in issue number 50, February 1964, the Black Widow in number 52, April 1964, and Hawkeye five issues later. Lee said that of all the comic books we published at Marvel, we got more fan mail for Iron Man from women, from females, than any other title. We didn't get much fan mail from girls, but whenever we did, the letter was usually addressed to Iron Man. Lee and Kirby included Iron Man in the Avengers No. 1, September 1963, as a founding member of the superhero team. The character has since appeared in every subsequent volume of the series. Writers have updated the war and locale in which Stark is injured. In the original 1963 story, it was the Vietnam War. In the 1990s, it was updated to be the First Gulf War, and in the 2000s updated again to be the war in Afghanistan. Stark's time with the Asian Nobel Prize winning scientist Ho Yin-sen is consistent through nearly all incarnations of Iron Man origin, depicting Stark and Yin-sen building the original armor together. One exception is the direct-to-DVD animated feature film The Invincible Iron Man, in which the armor Stark uses to escape his captors is not the first Iron Man suit. The original Iron Man title explored Cold War themes, as did other Stan Lee projects in the early years of Marvel Comics, where the Fantastic Four and the Incredible Hulk respectively focused on American domestic and government responses to the communist threat. Iron Man explored the industry's role in the struggle. Tony Stark's real-life model, Howard Hughes, was a significant defense contractor who developed new weapons technologies. Hughes was an icon both of American individualism and the burdens of fame. Historian Robert Jenner, in the Journal of Popular Culture, writes that Tony Stark specifically presents an idealized portrait of the American inventor, where earlier decades had seen important technological innovations come from famous individuals, for example, Nikola Tesla, Thomas Edison, Alexander Graham Bell, the Wright brothers, the 1960s saw new technologies, including weapons, being developed mainly by the research teams of corporations. As a result, little room remained for the inventor who wanted credit for, and creative and economic control over, their creations. Issues of entrepreneurial autonomy, government supervision of research, and ultimate loyalty figured prominently in early Iron Man story as of the same issues affecting American scientists and engineers of that era. Tony Stark, writes Genter, is an inventor who finds motive in his emasculation as an autonomous creative individual. This blow is symbolized by his chest wound, inflicted at the moment he is forced to invent things for others, instead of just himself. To Genter. Stark's transformation into Iron Man represents Stark's effort to reclaim his autonomy, and thus his manhood. The character's pursuit of women in bed or battle, writes Genter, 
represents another aspect of this effort. The pattern finds parallels in other works of 1960s popular fiction by authors such as Ian Fleming, creator of James Bond, Mickey Spillen, Mike Hammer, and Norman Mailer, who made unregulated sexuality a form of authenticity. After issue number 99, March 1968, the Tales of Suspense series was renamed Captain America. An Iron Man story appeared in the one-shot comic Iron Man and Submariner, April 1968, before the Golden Avenger made his solo debut with Iron Man No. 1, May 1968. The series is and issue gives its copyright title Iron Man, while the trademark cover logo of most issues is the Invincible Iron Man. This initial series ended with issue number 332, September 1996. Jim Lee, Scott Lobdell, and Jeff Loeb authored a second volume of the series which was drawn primarily by Wills Portacio and Ryan Benjamin. This volume took place in a parallel universe and ran 13 issues. November 1996 and November 1997, Volume 3 whose first 25 issues were written by Kurt Buskin then by Buskin Roger Stern, ran 89 issues, February 1998 a December 2004. Later writers included Joe Quesada, Frank Thierry, Mike Grell, and John Jackson Miller. Issue number 41, June 2001, was additionally numbered number 386 reflecting the start of dual numbering starting from the premiere issue of Volume 1 in 1968. The final issue was dual numbered as number 434. The next Iron Man series, Iron Man Volume 4, debuted in early 2005 with the Warren Ellis written storyline Extremis, with artist Adi Granov. It ran 35 issues, January 2005 a January 2009 with the cover logo simply Iron Man beginning with issue number 13, and Iron Man, director of SHILD, beginning issue number 15. On the final three issues, the cover logo was overwritten by War Machine, weapon of SHILD, which led to the launch of the War Machine ongoing series. The Invincible Iron Man by writer Matt Fraction and artist Salvador Laroca began with the premiere issue cover dated July 2008. For a seven-month overlap, Marvel published both Volume 4 and Volume 5 simultaneously. This invincible volume jumped its numbering of issues from number 33 to number 500, cover dated March 2011, to reflect the start from the premiere issue of Volume 1 in 1968. After the conclusion of the Invincible Iron Man a new Iron Man series was started as a part of Marvel Now, written by Kieran Gillen and illustrated by Greg Land. It began with issue number 1 in November 2012. Many Iron Man annuals, miniseries, and one-shot titles have been published through the years, such as Age of Innocence, The Rebirth of Iron Man, February 1996, Iron Man, The Iron Age No. 1 A2, August A. September 1998, Iron Man, Bad Blood No. 1 A4, September A. December 2000. Iron Man House of M No. 1A3, September A November 2005, Fantastic Four, Iron Man, Big in Japan No. 1A4, December 2005A March 2006, Iron Man, The Inevitable No. 1A6, February A July 2006, Iron Man, Captain America, Casualties of War, February 2007, Iron Man. Hypervelocity No. 1 A6, Mark August 2007, Iron Man, Enter the Mandarin No. 1 A6, November 2007 A April 2008, and Iron Man, Legacy of Doom, June A September 2008. Publications have included such spin-offs as the one-shot Iron Man 2020, June 1994, featuring a different Iron Man in the future and the animated TV series adaptations Marvel Action Hour, featuring Iron Man No. 1 AA, November 1994 A June 1995, and Marvel Adventures Iron Man No. 1 A 12, July 2007 A June 2008.